Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1690. Today it's Ferrari time. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in Austin, Texas, talking with a very special lady by the name of Leslie Blinn. Leslie, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I am. All right. We're going to have some fun today talking about Ferraris. Now, before I give you a proper introduction, I want you to tell my listeners one little thing that most people may not know about you. Most people do not know that I enjoy recreational shooting. It truly is a great mental discipline for me. I don't get to the range as much as possible, but it is something that I truly enjoy. You know, I love doing that too. And I'll tell you, I had Willie T. Ribs, the famous racer. I believe he was the first African-American Indy car driver to, to run there. And his son is a champion skeet shooter. And Willie said he loves to do it. And he did it kind of as a distraction and a way to focus himself, to uh, think about other things and kind of drive him in. And I, I agree. But I'll tell you what I found. I've taken my wife and my kids to the shooting range, especially when my kids were younger, so we could teach them gun safety. And I found that my wife and my daughter were much better shooters than my son and I. And I think it's because women tend to be able to focus a little better. Have you found that for your shooting? I have, and um, my significant other, Brian Crawl, is an NRA uh, certified instructor, and he was my teacher, and he has always said that. Women are better at taking instruction and becoming better shooters. So what you just said is true. Yeah, I think it's the same on the track, too. You know, lots of times us guys, we think a little bit of macho seeps in and we go, ah, we'll be good at this and this will be a piece of cake. Whereas, whereas women, both on the track, I've learned, and at the shooting range, as you said, they take better instruction. They listen. Uh, good listeners. Women are. I know my wife is a great listener. And that helps quite a bit. So I think that's cool. Shooting is really fun. We have a shooting range near here. My next door neighbor was a certified NRA safety instructor. He's the one that taught all us how to be safe around weapons and so forth. I like to go shooting with him. So very cool. Well, let me give you a proper introduction. And we're going to dive into some questions here. Leslie Blinn is the Copa Bella Makina, chief judge of the Ferrari Club of America. She's the past national secretary and past president and regional director of the FCA Pacific Region up there in Northern California. Leslie is the FCA Major Award Sponsor Coordinator for their annual Concours and judged at the 70th anniversary of Ferrari in Marinello. She is also the Concours Editor of the Prancing Horse Magazine. She's a retired pharmacist holding a Doctor of pharma, ph Pharmacy degree. Am I saying that right? Or is it pharmacology? You are. Okay, pharmacy, pharmacy degree. There we go. From the University of Southern California. And of course, that means she bleeds cardinal and gold. And she has trained and shown quarter horses as well. Leslie owns a 1988 328 GTS, a 1990 Testarossa, and a 1989 LM002 for those off-road excursions. There's a unique vehicle. Oh, it is. We'll be back in just a minute to talk with Leslie, but first a word from our valued sponsors that make this show possible. So keep your seatbelts on. We're talking Ferraris today with Leslie Blinn. We'll be right back. The best way to protect your vehicles is with a Covercraft custom fit car cover. I know because I've been using their covers on my vehicles since 1975. Plus, they offer a multitude of options depending on your situation. Indoor covers include form fit, dust stop, the oh so soft fleece satin, and their very unique view shield, a cover that protects while allowing you to see your favorite vehicle while the cover's on your car. Amazing. Need a cover that will protect your ride outside? Their incredible options allow you to choose from Weather Shield, Sombrella, Weather Shield HD, Block It, Reflect, Carhartt, Evolution, Nova, and Weather Shield HP. So many options. Whether you're looking for rain protection, UV shielding from the sun's damaging rays, breathability, dust protection, snow protection, 
even ding protection, and protection from those paint-destroying bird droppings. They've got you covered. Their soft-touch covers are safe for your paint, and the custom fit keeps them from blowing off. If you live in a windy area, get the Covercraft Gust Guards. They're a must-have if your car sits outside in windy conditions. Worried about theft? They have cable locks, too, with built-in grommets that keep your cover safely on your vehicle. Their website makes ordering fast and easy, and their talented customer service department will walk you through any ordering questions. They can customize a cover for almost any vehicle on the planet. And I've got a deal for you. If you use the code yeah 120 at covercraft.com you'll get 10 percent off your covercraft order that's right so go to covercraft.com use the code yeah y-e-a-h 120 at checkout and get 10 percent off on me mark here at cars yeah covercraft they've got you covered american collector's insurance that's who now protects my porsche turbo yeah the one i call my orange crush when it came time to renew my policy my carrier jacked my rates up even though i'd been with them for years i'd never made a claim no tickets nothing what's with that adios so i started shopping around and kept hearing about american collector's insurance from fellow automotive enthusiasts friends and folks in the car industry I did some investigating and learned that American Collectors Insurance have been protecting collector vehicles since 1976. I'm not a price shopper when it comes to insurance. I want to be able to sleep at night. I also want agreed value protection for my special ride. With an agreed valued policy from American Collectors Insurance, I'll be paid what my vehicle's full agreed value is. A number I set with the insurer at the start of the policy so I know there will be no surprises about what my car's value is, should something terrible happen. I shopped around and decided to protect my car with American Collectors Insurance. Give them a call for a quote today at 866-ACI, yeah, that's 866 866- 224-9324 and protect the ones you love. Make sure you tell them Mark sent you. You'll be glad you did. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. All right, Leslie, we're back. And as we start on this journey, I like to call your life. I would love for you to share a success quote or a mantra. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tire smoking a little bit here on Cars. Yeah, so Leslie, grab the wheel. Well, I have always felt you need to be prepared to shift gears and change lanes in life. (laughs) The roadmap that we set for ourselves, for our goals, our hopes, our visions, all those things that we, we dream about often present detours. We need to be prepared to take that different road because there are opportunities that we would never, ever otherwise see. And we need to embrace the process and make that change, even though most of us really don't like change. And it has served me well. And I always, always tell people, and I try to do this for myself, find reasons to laugh no matter what. (laughs) Live your life out loud. You know, these are great sayings, great mantras. And those people that can adapt and change and pivot are certainly uh, a bit more successful. And and we're going to talk a little bit about your life here as it relates to that. Let's start with this. You know, we have this little thing, which has become a huge thing called COVID that's affected all of our lives today. It's kept us from going to events and getting together with friends and so forth. How have you adapted that concept into how you've dealt with this challenge we've all faced this year? Well, as you well know, all the car people, the fun for the all the car stuff for the summer of 2020 was canceled. And I think that was really devastating in ways that we draw our energy with the people we see at these events. And it's not just about the cars, it's about the relationships. And I know I draw on that. Some of these people I see between Cavallino and the FCA annual event and Monterey three times a year. But it so fills you up with energy, and I just can't explain it better than that. And um, we were all at a loss for that. I spent a lot of time on the phone and emails with different people that I interact with in the many things I do for the club. And I think that helped us get through it all. And I'm hoping, again, for next year that things get back to what it should be. 
Boy, yeah, we all are hoping and planning for that for sure. But you hit the nail on the head, Leslie. I've been going to so many events for so many years, and it really is the people. I always say the cars are just the catalyst, but it's the people. And I go to events where I see some people only one time a year, but you're instant friends again, and you just talk like you've been talking to them. But of course, this year we lost all of that. The time we're recording the show, I would have been at my 31st SEMA show. So I see a lot of people doing a lot of different things to try to fill those voids. They, they're they posting pictures of last events and things like that. Now with the Ferrari Club, known as the FCA, um, it's a great organization. There's wonderful people. And you don't have to own a Ferrari to be a member. Is that right? That is correct. You do not. But it usually takes you down that road. Yes. Because it <laughs> yeah. becomes, you know, infectious, if you will. And the group is very supportive. I mentioned three cars that you own that have become cars in your life, but one of those is a pretty unique car, the LM002, which of course is a Lamborghini. It's one of those cars that you don't see too many of those. And a mutual friend of ours, John Shirley, when I met him when I moved up here 26 years ago, he had one of those in his garage. And he told me all about how it was originally designed to be a military vehicle for a, a country in the Middle East. And then they didn't they didn't buy them. So they, they kind of flipped them into sports cars. Whatever led you to buy that vehicle? Well, funny story. In 1989 was the first year I had gone to Monterey. And out there at Concorso Italiano, there was this red LM002. I did not know what it was. I'd never seen one before. And I just needed to know everything about it. And the owner came up to the car. And I asked him, may I please have a picture in the back of it? And he says, sure. So as every year after that, that car would be there. Well, as I came to find out and got involved in the Ferrari Club, that has now been a an old friend of mine that I owned for 30 years, Dick Shader. And he still has his LM002. And um, he would give me a ride along after Concorso Italiano was over. He would drive me through the course. And I loved that car. One time I ate lunch in that car. <laughs> Everybody in my world knew I loved that car. So in 1997, one came up for sale out of a truck. And a very good friend of mine who was a car broker said, Leslie, I found one. I'm not going to broker it. I'm just going to put you in touch with the guy that has it, um, the, the mechanic that has it. And that was in Berkeley, California. So I went to ride in it, and I got in the car, and I drove it around Berkeley like I'd owned it forever. <laughs> I loved that car. So yeah. that was October 1997, and I've had it ever since, and it is just an amazing car. Now, I will tell you also, if I take that car to a Ferrari event anywhere, everybody will go, oh, yeah, there's those over there. There's an Enzo or there's, you know, one of these newer ones. Everybody goes to that LMO. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's rare. Oh, it is rare. Mine is number 149. Wow. And um, it is just an amazing car. But like I said, I don't drive it as much as I would like to. But it is, it remains just the love of my life, if you will. I would imagine when you take that anywhere, even to get gas, it's not a short trip because people are probably coming up going, what on earth is this? And then when they find out what it is and how old it is, and it really looked ahead of its time when you think about it, it still kind of looks modern today. Now, some people may raise their eyebrows at that, but, uh, and you're not a, a, a large woman, you're a petite woman. So you must feel like a queen being in that thing. Well, I do. I just, it, it puts a smile on my face no matter what's going on. You just get in that. And the thing about it, too, is you have to watch all the other cars around you because everybody's watching you. Yeah. And maybe they're not watching what they're doing. Yeah. But, you know, like you said, it started out, like John Shirley said, it's a military vehicle, but it didn't pass on to that. It went to the, you know, first desert storm yeah. and to Iraq. And that's where, that's where half of them were. And then a huge amount of them came to the United States. And I don't know how many now are, um, you know, still around. And one of um, Saddam Hussein's son had one. It was a navy blue. And when they went into Baghdad and they found it, they, they blew it up. And all of us were going, why did you do that? Oh, gosh, yeah. Why not say 
So there's just a lot of interesting history around those cars. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's dive into the Ferrari Club of America, FCA. What got you involved in this? And you've done so many things with the Ferrari Club. I mean, it's really been a big part of your life. So let's talk a little bit about what the club means to you and all the fun things that you're doing and what you're doing with them now. Well, like, you know, when I started thinking about historically all the things that I've done, I got involved back in 1989. The gentleman I was married to at the time had a Ferrari and that's what thrust me into all the activities in the Pacific region. And at the time, that was, that's huge. The Pacific region was at Gilbertson. It was all of those people and fun events, including the Virginia City Hill Climb, of which I've participated in in several cars. And it's just a, again, it's a group of people that you become so close to and you become involved. So that's where it started. So it started out at the regional level. And then as time went on, I, I really wanted to judge cars. So back in 1999, I approached Ed Gilbertson and I said, I really want to judge cars. And so he told me what I needed to do. And I started at Palo Alto Concord. There are several others that are up in Northern California and of course, Concorso Italiano. So I started um, being mentored, and that's where I started being a judge. So I started this in um, 1999. Oh, wow. And so now I'm a master IACPFA judge. So then I was asked to run for a national secretary, of, of which I did. And then, you know, I raised my, I always, this is something that I do, I raised my hand a lot. <laughs> and yeah. so I was asked back in 2015 to take over the Copa Bella Machina um, competition. And then the major award sponsorship for the Concord came up, but I raised my hand for that. And Brian says, sit on your hands from now on. <laughs> Just sit on your hands. Stop raising your hands, woman. <laughs> but it's, it's hard for me to not because I enjoy it so much. Yeah. And you also re- alluded to this. It's, the cars bring us together, but I, I've seen all these cars a lot, but it's the people that I really need to see and, and stay connected with. Yeah. And the club has done that for me. And um, then recently, you know, I was just appointed the chief of Concord for the Fry Club of America. Congratulations. You know, like I said, it, it was, it was um, in, earlier this year, but, because you know why, nothing happened. And so now we're trying to pick up where we left off. And so I'm in the process of, of transitioning. It was supposed to be in Montreblanc in uh, Quebec, mm-hmm. Canada in July, but that was postponed. And so now it should be in Portland, Oregon in 2021 in July. So that's how I've been involved and I just got back, or not back, but just did a regional concourse a couple of weeks ago in Bernie, Texas, where Brian and I went down there and judged Ferraris at a local show. So it's just always raising your hand and doing things. Yeah. And I love every minute of it. And I get a lot back from it. Well, of course. Well, this is what clubs are all about. And of course, the great, iconic Ed Gilbertson. He's been a guest on the show a couple of times here. His whole organization, Icy Jag and the judging and everything that he's done for the Mark Ferrari and for all the Marks and for big Concours events has been absolutely fantastic. You know, I always like to ask my guests about a big challenge they face in their life. And it's really more about how they overcame it. And of course, the lesson learned. So walk us through one of those times, if you would, Leslie, and tell us how that experience helped you gain even more momentum when you came out on the other side of it in a positive way? Well, I I thought long and hard about this. And it's when I took over, when I was asked to take over the Copa Bella Machina competition in 2014. And um, I just, I can give you a little bit about what it's it's a competition in which the cars are judged based on 100% function. It's pass or fail, and it, it, um, I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of background here. It means translates into beautiful machine, which all Ferraris are, and the goal of the Copa Bella Machina competition is to determine if all that equipment and components on the Ferrari are fully functional 
and if it operates as designed when the car left the factory. It's a two-hour test, and it consists of a, a static portion where all the controls and functions are tested, and a driving portion over a set con a course on an open road. It's pass-fail with no qualifiers, modifications, or exclusion. And to get that award, you must pass 100%, and to qualify, a car must achieve a platino, which is up 97 points or higher. So when I took that challenge on at that time, there were 20 to 25 cars entered in that competition. It was Monterey 2015, and 57 cars registered oh my gosh. to enter the competition. Uh-oh. <laughs> and that was the first year I had ever done it. Yeah. And I was expecting 20 to 25. There were, you know, the Concord went late. People had to go home. And, you know, I rely on Concord judges to become my evaluators. I don't know <laughs> wow. how I got through it, yeah. but I did. Yeah. And we were able to evaluate all that qualified. And at the end of the day, everybody felt that they had a fabulous time and that everything was organized and that it was um, a fun event. And that's my goal. We were exhausted, but if everybody's got a smile on their face and they feel it was worth their time and their expense and everything, even if they weren't successful and they come back to do it again, what I call frequent flyers, and I've had many, I'm successful. And that was my the most huge challenge that I had. It was like trial by fire. And um, I look back on it and I'm going, wow, I, I accomplished this. So. I'm getting ready to turn it over to someone else as I take on the chief of Concord and having a bit of hard time with that because it's your baby. And, you know, but anyway, that was, I learned a lot about ensuring there's enthusiasm. People are treated fairly. They know that um, they had a, a shot at it, if you will, no matter what. And that's really what it was about. Wow. That's incredible. Man, I had your hands full. Oh, that wore me out. Well, let's take a short break and we'll pull over the curb here. Take a breath. Thank our sponsors. We come back. We're going to dive into your personal passion for this love of Ferraris and automobiles. So keep your seatbelts on. We'll be right back. Let's step away from the conversation to talk about our charity of choice here at Cars Yeah, America's Automotive Trust. America's Automotive Trust is a group of like-minded nonprofits that are working together to preserve and promote car culture across the country. Together, they provide scholarships and grants to aspiring technicians and restoration artists. They provide youth education programs and bring communities together through automotive-related events, car shows, and drives. Among those nonprofits is RPM Foundation, a terrific organization working to keep our favorite collector cars on the road. RPM was created to ensure that the specialized skills needed to care for classic automobiles, boats, and motorcycles continue to be passed down from generation to generation. They do this by supporting training for young people with a passion for restoration and setting them up with mentors who can share their valuable knowledge. So far, they've awarded more than $3.5 million to restoration education projects across 35 states. Incredible! To learn more about RPM or to donate to their mission, visit www.rpm.foundation. You'll be glad you did. So what do you do after running a race team for 27 years with over 100 podiums, multiple Daytona wins, and a win at Le Mans? Racer and the Racers Group team owner, Kevin Buckler, founded Adobe Road Winery. Located in Petaluma, California, he and his team have created a winning combination with the Racing Series. These are four ultra-premium red wine blends that are in a class of their own. Like racing, these wines comprise of art, Precision, engineering, science, wrapped in a whole lot of fun. You can choose from four blends, titled Redline, Apex, Shift, and the 24. Today I'm going to tell you about Apex. It's a rich and complex blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, and Cabernet Franc. This blend is a showcase of perfection and hits the Apex with its full-bodied smooth finish. An added very cool option is the label. It's a multi-dimensional rumble strip apex 
reminiscent of Turn 4 at Laguna Seca. The racing series is a spectacular gift for the automotive enthusiast in your life, and I've got a deal for you. If you use the code CARS, yeah, all one word in all caps, at checkout, you get $10 off any purchase of the wines from the racing series. Your wine ships promptly and arrives quickly. Use the code CARS, yeah, at checkout for $10 off your purchase today. There's always a seat at the table for excellence with the racing series. Go to adoberoadwines.com today and use the code CARS, yeah. <coughs> Cheers! All right, here we go. We're going to take off again here, Leslie, and I want you to share a story with us that instigated your passion for cars, that pivotal moment in your life when you knew, you know what, I think I'm a car gal. Ah, well, I remember it very, very well. It was, you know, how on your 16th birthday, at least back then, you couldn't wait to get your driver's license. (laughs) And you go on your birthday to get your driver's license, no matter what. You take time off of school. Mm -hmm. You get your driver's license. Then you beg to do all those stupid errands that your parents, um, (laughs) you know, have done. And you do that for a while, too. You go, okay, well, the blue's off that road. But (laughs) my brother, he was a car guy back in the day. You know, he was eight years older than I was. But he was a car guy. I mean, he had, like, a Corvair. He had an Opal GT. He had these weird things. And he had a 1967 Pontiac GTO. I loved that car. When he dropped me off at school, I loved it because people looked because it was such a cool car. So when I got my driver's license, I thought, I need to learn how to drive a stick. So I, you know, he finally relented and we went down to the local college parking lot after school hours. And it was real easy on a flat surface. There's no traffic. But that wasn't the real world. The road home happened to be a steep hill with a stop sign at the top. Uh-oh, yeah, the dreaded hill with a stop sign. <laughs> I realized at that point, oh, my gosh, I needed three feet. Clutch, <laughs> brake, and gas. Yeah. And it was a bit of a rush hour, so there were cars parked behind me, and I was frozen. Um, my brother got out of the car and waved everyone around with a smile. Maybe he was even laughing. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah. But what a good and patient brother. No, nice guy. I know he was. He he was. Subsequently, I would ask him to borrow it to do those errands. But sometimes I would go out on a very quiet, long road in Glendora, California, where I grew up at night and race up and down the road. (laughs) I just love first and second gears. Yeah. And, you know, that's when I knew I was a car person. He never knew I did this until many, many years later. Yeah. (laughs) But that's truly when I knew. Oh, what a great story. And once in a while, I think I I need one of those. And Brian says, no, you don't. (laughs) And I said, you're right. It's It's a memory can't buy a memory. You just have to live one. Sometimes you have to live them and let them be a memory. Well, let's talk about another memory. Your first really special vehicle, the one for you. What was it? It was my my 1967 VW Beetle. Oh, cool. License number YXJ477. (laughs) You know how you remember your very first car? Yes. It was my very own. And so by default, it made it the most special car. And I also, it was like a step down from driving that GTO. It was like, you think? (laughs) (laughs) It was like, really, this clutch, it doesn't require a whole lot of anything I could do with my hand. I will never forget that part. Yeah. You know, 67 was a great year. I had a 67 Carmagia in high school and all through college. And I really wanted a Porsche, but I couldn't afford one, of course, at that point in time in my life. So I called that my poor man's Porsche. And you know what? You're right. My license plate on that car was WTK865, the black plate with the yellow letters and numbers. I've just always remembered it. All these years later, I got that car in 73, I believe it was, and promptly tore it all apart, restored it, built up the engine, did all that kind of fun stuff. But my sister had a VW Beetle. I think hers was a 69. But those were were so popular back in the day. Do you know by any chance where that car is now or is it long gone? Oh, you shouldn't have asked that question. Uh Uh-oh. My husband decided to drive it 
to his classes at Cal State LA and it was stolen and stripped. Oh no. Oh, that's oh, sad. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah. We cried we cried a lot about that. Yeah. Oh. Wow. But um I know, but it I will I will never ever ever forget it. It just a, a great car and you know, I like the they changed the bumpers what in 69. Yep. Yeah, they and they got a little heavier. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't like them. I liked mine. Yeah. But, yeah. I call them the towel bar bumpers. Blue. Oh. You know, because they had those little bars, you know, that came up. Uh, uh, yeah, the towel bars. But yours was powder blue? Yes. Oh, nice. That's a good color. I like that. It was. Yeah, my sister's was uh, kind of a metallic blue color. Actually, we surprised her and we had the car painted for her because I forget. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think it was white and she thought, oh, this is kind of boring. And so uh, we took it over to a friend's house and stripped it down and took it to, I think we took it to Earl Scheib. Remember, Earl Scheib, I'll paint your car for twenty nine ninety five. <laughs> so I know. Yeah. And he did. And he even painted <laughs> over the bugs, too. Yeah. <laughs> He painted over everything. Not a lot of prep there. No, we prepped it pretty well, but he still, yeah, we had to kind of do a little wet sanding on that thing to make it look good. Well, I'm going to crawl into your head here, Leslie. I'm going to be your psychologist today. If you woke up tomorrow and you were manifest as a vehicle, what would Leslie Blinn be? And more importantly, why? I would be a 250 GTO. Okay, cool. Because I would be on everybody's A-list. <laughs> I would be invited to just go anywhere and everywhere in the world. I would be so popular. <laughs> and current value aside, it is not a high maintenance car. It's a basic motor, no computers. It's just easy if you just look at that aspect of it. And, and it's a stick shift. Yep. That's a requirement. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, everybody loves Leslie. She's always involved. So I see where that kind of fits, the 250 GTO. Yeah, everybody loves that vehicle for sure. Oh, my gosh. Although I don't know if you've ever tried to tune one. I'm not sure it's that easy, but... Uh, in my mind, it is. In your mind. Yeah, there you go. I love it. Well, and our mutual friend, John Shirley, who uh, Leslie sent me, and you'll see this picture on her show notes page. She got a ride in his 250 TR, which is a car that I've been able to play with. Um, he's got a 250 GTO that's uh, currently white. Back in the day, it was red, but I think it's the only white one I've ever seen. So uh, we both have friends in good places, I think, Leslie. We do. We do. In high places, so to speak. But so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ferrari fans, for sure. All right, Leslie, we are inning what I call the last lap. I'm going to fire off some questions. Have you give me some quick blips of that 250 GTO throttle because that Colombo motor sounds oh so good. What is one of your personal habits that you believe has contributed to your many successes in life? Well, I try to be very, very organized and I am a bit OCD <laughs> and that does help. Sometimes I have to do A before B. I can't go on to C, but, you know, that's who I am, and I'm not going to change. <laughs> but the other is, is I try to really treat people well, make them feel good about themselves, and I always value their contributions. I always try to instill enthusiasm into what they bring, for example, the Ferrari Club and for my Copa Bella Machina. And I, I think I've achieved that, and I'm very proud of that. Yes, absolutely. Now, if I could arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, either living or deceased, who would it be? Nigel Mansell. Really? Why Nigel? Well, why not Nigel? <laughs> he was driving for Ferrari when I first was introduced to um, watching Formula One, and he made watching the races very interesting because he made things happen. Yeah. He was not shy in his driving nor his personality. And it was back when the guys drove the cars more than the cars drove the guys, if you will. And he was both a Formula One world champion. That was 1992. And subsequently, Cart Indy world champion the following year. And my favorite race was the Mexico Grand Prix, Mexico City, in um, 1990 when the Ferraris were one and two, and he and Prost finished one and two, and he passed Berger. 
in that amazing, amazing tapping because he made things happen. So that's why I would like to have a drink with him. Love it. Yeah, great driver to watch and enjoy. Now, when it comes to automotive advice, what's the best advice someone else ever offered to you? Well, your car is like a horse. It needs regular use and care. <laughs> you turn the, when you turn the key off, time does not stop. Things mm. continue to deteriorate. And Ferraris are meant to be driven for a lot of reasons, enjoyment and to make sure that everything is working well and the fluids and everything are flowing. So yeah. that, is the, that is the best advice. You know, it's really important advice. Every time I've purchased a car because it had low miles, when I've gotten it, it's needed all sorts of service because of that, because it sits. And that's the worst thing for any vehicle for it to sit. So, yep, get out and enjoy your vehicles and share them with other people. Now, when it comes to great resources, is there one you'd like to share with our listeners? Well, you know, I thought about resources and considering I'm not in a business per se, you know, I'm retired and I'm basically just really involved in the club mm -hmm. on many levels. But Motion Products and T. Rutland are a resource that I've known those guys for many, many years. And um, they're very involved with the FCA. And several of them helped me, you know, judge for the Copa Bella Machina. They go beyond belief for an extra mile for Ferrari owners. I've seen them do this and um, they are just a great group of guys and they do great work. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, just, yeah, uh, incredible what they do there with vehicles. And I definitely want to also uh, thank Dustin Wetmore for referring you to the show today. Great guy. And yeah. They do awesome, awesome work. Now, my next question here has to do with a book that you've read that you'd like to share. Is there one that you've read that you think our listeners would learn a lot from? Well, you know, oddly enough, it's not a car book or okay. about cars. All right. It's Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and it's all small stuff. And it's probably back, back in the 90s, yep. and it was given to me many years ago when I was going through a really tough time in my life. And it really helped me put things in perspective. And it grounded me. Mm. And so I've read it several times since. And now, if I'm going through some stuff, I just think of the title. And it really <laughs> regrounds me because it brings back everything I read. And I realize, you know, pick your battles and just let it go. Yeah. It's, it's really about what I take away from it. And I really recommend that just in general for people to read. It's a great book by author Richard Carlson. And it is a, a good book and it's a good reminder, especially this day and age with so many things that are thrown at us and all this stuff that you can pile on yourself and just weight yourself down. So I would recommend that you listeners uh, get a copy of this thing and read it. You'll find it on Leslie's show notes page on the Cars yeah website with a link to it. Just go to carsyad.com, type in Leslie Blinn, B-L-I-N-N, and that page will pop up with that book. And by the way, there's a great place on the website called Guest Recommended Books, where there's over 1,700 books listed there, all with a quick, easy click to buy. So check it out. All right, Leslie, we are up to the checkered flag. And this last question can be a bit of a doozy. I'm going to buy you something cool today, a dream ride, a collector car, something very fun. But there's a couple rules to this game that may make this a little difficult. One is you can't buy or pick the most expensive car, that GTO, and then sell it and have quite the life. You've got to keep it. And I want you to drive it. No garage queens here, but I don't think that's a problem for you, especially after the great advice you gave us. But here's the hard part. It's the only one cool collector car you can have in your garage. So it needs to tick a lot of boxes. What am I going to buy for Leslie Blinn today? That would be a 288 GTL. Oh, we're going down a little different path here. Okay, nice. Oh, we are. <laughs> what do you love about the 288? It's everything... A sports car should be, as we know, it has a manual transmission. It's very analog. It's light. It's nimble and quick. And above all, it is beautiful. Yeah. And, you know, further from a judging point of view, a very easy car to judge for originality, especially in this day and age where judging is, with the newer cars, it's about now we have bill sheets because you can have so many options beyond what it ever was. Mm -hmm. And 
these cars came with three options, red inserts in the seats, air conditioning or not, <laughs> and electric or roll-up windows. Wow. They're great. Yeah. They were all painted red except one, and this one was painted yellow, but before it even left the factory. And this was at the request of a very special client of Ferrari. And um, these are among the cars I judged at Marinello for the Ferrari 70th anniversary. And I've loved them forever. And so that's the car I would have. I would never sell it. Hey, I've never sold that LMO or two, okay? <laughs> I would never sell. The, we'll park that a, one on the side. Just, yeah. <laughs> it is just a, a fabulous car. Uh, one of the best I think Ferrari's been uh, on many levels, but wasn't totally appreciated when it first was introduced. But now it is, you know, they're so coveted and I'm, I'm happy for that. Yeah. Uh, they only made 272 of those vehicles and they were produced in the mid eighties. And you're right. I mean, they were kind of part of that uh, homologation of their group B or circuit racing cars, a road version of those, I guess, are the rally group B rally cars. But what's cool about those, I think is they were a 2.9 liter twin turbo. If I'm my memory serves me right, correct? Yes. Yeah, that was pretty different and pretty cool. And they were only produced in a very short period of time, yes. Yeah, yeah, but the styling done by Paninfrina, so yeah, and Leonardo Fioravanti, Fior, I don't ever say his name right, Fioravanti, Fioravanti. Am I saying that right? Leonardo Fioravanti, I, I believe. Don't, I was, don't know. I'm, yeah, I think he was the, I'm with you with the Italian. The uh, styling guy. but uh, And, of course, uh, Nicola, the chief engineer. That Those are really special cars. So I would love to get you one of those. Now, do you want that one yellow one or do you want a red one? Um, you know, I'm not a red person. Yellow oh. would work. Okay. Well, that'll make it a little harder for Just me, saying. but I'll get to work on that. Uh, <laughs> well, I just want to add, if I can... One of the cars that I judged at Marinello of the 288 GTOs, it was a gentleman that he had, was the original owner. And when we went up to ask him about his car, which we always do when we judge, he said, I was born in Marinello. I was raised in Mar Marinello. I live in Marinello. I work in Marinello. And I bought this car in Marinello. <laughs> and I've had it since I bought it. I love that guy. And he had his grandkids with him. And when he got an award up on the stage, the kid at, at you know at the um, you know at the awards um, ceremony there, the grandkids poured out of the car. It was it was just a fabulous moment, and I enjoyed every minute of it. How fun! That's Truly, a love cool. for the car. Absolutely, very nice. Well, Leslie, you've taken me on a nice ride today. This has been really fun. I want to thank you for sharing your journey with us. Would you offer us one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you rip off down the highway in Marinello in that Ferrari 288 GTO? Well, I thought long and hard about this, but never say, say why, say why not, and do everything you can to the best of your ability. Again, always raise your hands, even though Brian says, Sit on them now. <laughs> but that attitude, really, I've, I've had great adventures in my life and a wonderful cadre of very, very good and special friends. I've helicopter skied in Canada. I've water skied since age five. And I have driven Ferraris on all the important tracks in, um, you know, California and, and also hill climbs. And I've gone skydiving and most recently hunted alligators in the swamps of Louisiana. Oh, my God. <laughs> so life has been interesting, and I just feel really very blessed for it all, what, what I've been able to experience. I do try to live it out loud, and I have very few complaints or regrets. There you go. How can people learn more about the Ferrari Club of America? Well, they can go to, you know, the, the Fry Club website, fryclub.org, I believe is what it is. They have the whole website of, you know, if you're interested in Concor, you're interested in Copa Bella Machina, or any of the activities, that is where they can go, and it's all right there. All right. Well, listeners, I'll put a link to that on Leslie's show so you can check it out. You're going to have some fun there. So if learn more about the Ferrari Club of America on their website. Leslie, thanks for being so generous and taking us for a, a fun Ferrari drive today and sharing all your expertise with us. Until you and I talk again, 
I'll see you down the road. Thank you. It was a fun time. Ciao, ciao. If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting. But what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy-to-read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars Yeah, has written that book, and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know, everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt, and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!